Waste Mother and today I'm going to be reacting to As soon as I started, Daphne started barking. What are the bloody chances? Daphne! Hang on a second. Come here, sweetie. Oh, you little poo-poo head. Where are you? Daphne and I have this beautiful relationship where she loves me in exchange for uh, rewards. She only eats expensive dog treats. <laughs> I've tried to give her like the generic little ones. She doesn't like those. They have to be uh, flown in. <laughs> Actually, if you could sponsor us, <laughs> that would save me a lot of money. Do another one. So anyway, today we have His Alexinho, Alexinho. Então. <laughs> when you see Inya or Inya on the end of a Portuguese word, it means like the little version of something. I wonder if he's little. Collapse river, if only. Quite a few of you. Oh, I'm excited. So by the sounds of it, this is like an acapella arrangement with beatbox. The amount of requests for this was overwhelming. I can't even imagine how amazing it is because so many people have just like... So many people have recommended it. Okay, let's watch it. <laughs> Life goes on, same old song. If only I had a plan. I'm a wrong road so long. guess would just be like a ooh, but to onset that he's kind of pushing it through relaxed lips to give it that kind of attack but the lips do have to be in a really specific position for this because they need to be slack and relaxed so you can get the ooh, hitting together thing but you also don't want or because that just sounds like Go! Just like a normal vocal foldy hummy hum. I think it has a bit of a g on set as well, like a gum. I was gonna say it's the guy with the dark jacket. I don't wanna get their names wrong and I don't know which is which yet. So I wish they were wearing slightly more different clothing so I could identify them. The guy on the far left is actually a really good example of how hums can be really, really different because his is actually more far back and a little bit more nasal. <laughs> Higher notes are generally suitable for this position unless you want them to sound really cutting and resonant. So an example being which is kind of where he is. And this is kind of making them sound like one collective synth because all of these hums have slightly different qualities. How do you change the sound on this bloody thing? What they all have in common is they're very smooth. There's no weird stuff going on like vibrato. Or... They're all quite punchy on the onsets of the note. <laughs> That's what gives it that kind of like artificial quality to it. <laughs> strong lipos. Actually, they've all got very strong lipos. Very big ones as well. Can you beatbox if you have small lips? If you beatbox, let me know, because my lips are quite average. Maybe that's generous. So do I have enough? The tone of his singing voice has been very well considered in making this a musical piece. Life goes on, same old song. Because notice how the other musical components of this are sitting perfectly around that frequency, highlighting it in the middle. Do, do thing at the top, very light, and then Mr. Basie McBuzz underneath. So the melody is fully surrounded by very complementary frequencies. This goes to show that adding more layers is not necessarily the answer to making a song sound full. You just need to make sure that the layers that you do have occupy different space sonically. All the components have some kind of effects on them. So there's things like compression to make all the sounds really full and balanced and chubby and reverb to make them sound bigger and give it that kind of ethereal effect. Oh 
This groove is just mm. so if this is the beat these are called eighth notes or crotchets we also have the sixteenth notes or quavers occupied all the time and this kind of feels quite fast like surely not ba 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 but the reason that it doesn't feel so fast and instead it just feels groovy and laid back and drivey is because of who is occupying which beat <laughs> And like I think that's probably two vocalists doing that in some kind of arrangement but it's so well done that you wouldn't be able to tell it just sounds like one synth. Also notice that that drop comes in when you don't expect it. What they both do together is actually occupying half a bar as opposed to a full bar. It's like why is it so hard to find? One, two, three. You would have expected that little drum fill break to have lasted like four counts, which would have been a full bar, but it doesn't. Whoa, it just kind of drops you in. If only I had a plan. It's lovely to hear that kind of breathy round tone that he was doing before when he was doing the and doos translated now into performing lyrics because it's so cool he's kept his role but it's morphed into like a lead melody role they've allowed space for his voice to flip up the octave that kind of broken syncopated rhythm has given his voice enough room so that it can safely everything can nicely coexist. Not to mention that that syncopated driving rhythm is obviously helping the song build as well, which is probably the main function of it. The backing vocal is close to the lead, but it's not the same kind of effect because there's lots of he, life goes on in the lead melody and ooh in that supporting part, which gives it a completely different formant. There's so many little flicky lips in the section. I honestly don't know who's doing who. I thought it was him, but then the lead singer guy starts doing the flicky lips. And everyone's flicking their lips all over the place. It works. And you know, that is the secret to good arranging. I say this all the time, is when parts weave in and out of each other and the other vocalizing humans in the collective take over each other's parts to allow someone else to do something else. It just gives the song such a continuity and flow and it means that you don't need so many people. It also makes the performance sound really clean because a lot of the time we just throw things into arrangements that we don't really need and layer something else on and then it all just gets very messy. It's like a Jenga. You can actually take quite a lot of components out of that and you still have a perfectly structured tower. Oh, and there it is. Well, until you don't, obviously. Maybe Jenga's a bad example. You only need loads and loads and loads of sh in your song when you haven't really paid attention to why you need it. So the answer is just throw stuff in. It just sounds like a fart when I do it. One must assume that he's recorded the little harmony. Why is it so hard to find? After. Unless these beatboxers can also harmonize an entire phrase, independent of the lead melody. Maybe they can.
you do that? The vanilla beige singer in me just assumes that's a riff with quite defined intervals. Ooh. I'm coming to learn these things and ever as they seem, so. There's so much syncopation in this as well, which really makes this groove extra groovy. Actually, if you want the world's worst syncopation tutorial, I speak about it in, can I do this? Analysis of this acapella song, funnily enough. I won't traumatize you with another one, just off beats. But that's like, super syncopated to the point where it's not in that division. It's like a, I don't know, is that like a 64? What beat is he touching there? But it's very hard to do something that syncopated because we're so drawn to the nearest, most normal beat. So yeah, really good rhythm. I bet these guys would all be brilliant drummers, but they don't need a drum kit because it's in here. <laughs> We get so many new textures here, it really starts to get bummy. How on earth did you make it sound so intense? So my first guess would be compress the space or have that as a foundation and then just Someone's doing a little shaker. By the looks of the little hand movements, I think it's you. Wow! If anyone knows how to do that, can you please tell me in the below region of this video? Because it really helps me out when you do. What a superpower to be able to detect the form and frequency of a certain instrument or sound or thing, mimic it exactly using anatomy that you can't even see. I love humans. Does he have really puffy cheeks as like air reserves so he can hold it on for a long time? What's amazing is these are very similar notes to the other stuff that he was doing when he was sounding more like a regular old synth. We know he's now a trumpet. But these mouth shapes need to be so detailed to differentiate the same notes into two completely different instruments and they do it so successfully. It's obviously got a bit of reverb in post-production, but that is a trumpet. You know it and I know it. The syncopation is just off the charts. It keeps you so on edge because you just don't know what little micro beat he's gonna hit with his boop, boop. Goes on, life goes on. They all have so many roles in this. They can all do the drums, the little snares and hi-hats and shimmers and basses and simps, and they can all sing by the looks of it as well. But they're taking it in turns to do certain things for the sake of the arrangement. That's just so groovy. How do you get it so clacky? By doing this <laughs> face. Is emphasizing the beat without actually adding any more power because just by doing this, you raise the foreman of the note. That's cool. Composition though, this one for the ah oh! makes me feel so 
tiny. It's both cute and intimidating. It's just like establishing that dominance at the end, you know? It's like, I know this knocked you over, so I'm gonna sing to you where you lie. <laughs> That's probably not what they thought. So if this was also your first time hearing it like it is mine, there's a couple of things that we're probably thinking. The first thing is we've heard music like this quite often, you know, like club dance music. But then we have to remember straight away that this is all voice. So when you've heard tracks that are similar to this, like club dance sort of tracks, those Pro Tool sessions, which is the software where you can layer all the different tracks, there's tens and tens of tracks usually. You would need lots of samples or loops or VSTs, which are like virtual instruments. If this is just voice, just think about how crazy that is. It doesn't seem right to think about this purely as a beatbox display. It's just so much more than that. I'm so excited to hear things like this, like full entire songs all with voices, no instruments, but it sounds like there is, like, you can basically just build your own limitless sample pack in here, and here, I guess, and here, in general. I really hope kids are seeing this. You may not be able to have external instruments and tools, but we all have an internal one. And it's just amazing for someone like me, whose whole entire career and, honestly, life is surrounded by trying to get people to make the most out of their human voice. Being introduced to this, I just can't even tell you how thrilling it is. I mean, I tell you all the time, but I'm still thrilled. Don't tell anyone what happened this day under this here bridge with these here larynxes and fast lips. An amazing song made possible by vocal miracles. So it's almost time now for me to love you and leave you until next week, but I do have to read you today's oracle card, as is tradition. It's okay to feel this way. It's absolutely okay to be emotional. The sooner you accept this, the sooner you can work with your emotions rather than against them. When you fully feel, you can release. So stop being a and just cry. I do agree. Crying is your friend sometimes. It happens a lot here on the channel. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. If there are any singers or beatboxers you would like to see me analyze, please do let me know down below in the comments as it is always my pleasure. Have a wonderful day, I love you so much and I cannot wait to see you again soon. Mwah. Bye. But it's the same thing, but different, you know? That didn't make any sense. There you go, babe. I love you so much. You want some of that? It's cozy, I got a fluffy blanket. This blanket was initially a bribe for Daphne to want to sit with me, but she doesn't. 25 years of my life is still Trying to get my dog to love me in exchange for treats I'm gonna keep it anyway. If all else fails, I do have my emotional support care bear. I just really love cuddles. 